Hello, seniors. I'm glad you are still here listening to an exciting lesson related to life science. I'm Mom De La Sorina, and I'll be presenting to you today's amazing lesson. Are you excited? So do I. So let's make the most out of our class time. Learn while having fun. We are products of billions of years worth of evolution and we know this much thanks to reproduction. Through reproduction, nature has selected organisms that have a gene pool that is capable of surviving and thriving. Animals have both adopted and evolved to better fit their environments thanks to variation. While as humans have goals in life, some animals were born to reproduce and die immediately after. So now you ask, why is reproducing offspring so important to animals? This is one of the questions that we will be answering into later on this module. In this lesson, we will understand key concepts about the complexities of reproduction in animals and synthesize our learning at the end. Lastly, this lesson will also allow you to appreciate the true importance of why a continuity of a species is important. Ladies and gentlemen, our lesson today, Lesson 3, Reproduction of Representative Animals. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to demonstrate understanding of the four main concepts under animal reproduction. Number one, sexual and asexual reproduction. Two, mechanisms of fertilization. Three, the factors that affect successful reproduction. And lastly, the journey of a human embryo. According to the UN, there are about 360,000 babies born every day in the world. Reproduction is one of the key survivors of a species. It is a way to continue life. A male and a female organism will mate and produce an offspring. These parent organisms will then pass on genetic information to their offspring, and in time, their offspring will pass their own genetic information as well. In this lesson, we will be describing the different ways on how representative animals reproduce. From our previous lesson of mitosis and meiosis, we know that cellular division plays an important role in reproduction. The relationship between these two processes are vital to animal reproduction. Some organisms like cows, sheep, dogs, and cats will require two parent organisms or sexual reproduction in order to reproduce an offspring, while others do not, or they undergo a sexual reproduction. Let's discuss sexual versus asexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, a parent organism will not need a mate or partner for it to produce its own offspring. The offspring of asexual organisms are an exact same copy of its parent organism. In sexual reproduction, a male and female gamete is needed in order to produce an offspring. In most instances, there is a male and female organism to produce the gametes, but this isn't always the case. Finding a partner for sexual animals can sometimes prove difficult. And so, as an adaptive mechanism and evolutionary solution, some animals exhibit hermaphroditism. A gamete is the male or female reproductive cell that contains half the genetic material of the organism. The male gamete is the spermatozoon or sperm cell in short, and the female gamete is the ovum or egg cell. This is when an organism has both male and female reproductive system. This is common among sessile or stationary animals. In hermaphroditism, the organism may or may not have a partner for fertilization to occur. Unlike an asexual offspring, asexual offspring is genetically unique from its parent organisms. Notice how these are 
two apparent sexes in sexual organisms, while well, there is no definite sex in the sexual organism. Moving on, let's discuss the types of asexual reproduction. Number one is the binary fission. It occurs in single-celled organisms. It is when a parent cell divides itself into two equal parts and creates an offspring, as shown in the figure. This type of reproduction is like cloning. To easily remember and understand the reproduction process of binary fission, it is valuable to remember what the terms mean. The word binary means something having two parts. Bi means two. The new daughter bacteria. While the word fission means the movement of splitting or the dividing of two equal parts. For example, bacteria. Second is the fragmentation. It occurs when an organism breaks a part of itself into a fragment and the fragment develops into a new organism. Examples are starfish and aquil flatworms. The third type of asexual reproduction is budding. It happens when a parent organism grows a bud attached to its body. When the bud is developed, it will detach itself from the parent and form a new organism. Examples are yeast and jellyfish. The fourth type is the parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis occurs when the embryo of an organism can grow and develop without fertilization. Examples are some species of ants and honeybees. Organisms are diverse, unique, and have equally unique features that help them survive in their environment. These features tailor to the animal's environment, size, habitat, and so many more factors. One unique feature is the way these organisms undergo fertilization. Let's talk about sexual reproduction. Let's keep the ball rolling. Let's discuss the mechanisms of fertilization. There are two types of fertilization, internal and external. Internal fertilization occurs when the fusion of gametes is inside the female body, while an external fertilization is the opposite or fusion of gametes is outside the female body. Let's discuss these types. Number one is oviparity. In oviparity, the female has fertilized eggs laid outside its body. The young will get nourishment from its yolk and will be protected by the external covering of the egg. The types of eggs will vary in different animals. Chicken eggs will have high calcium carbonate concentrations while reptiles will produce leathery eggs. Examples are chicken. The second type is the viviparity. Viviparity is the most common in mammals. The offspring develops within the female and is nourished by the mother's blood in the placenta. Example, bears. Ovoviviparity is the third type. Like oviparity, ovoviviparity has fertilized eggs that nourish the young from its yolk. The key difference between them is that ovoviviparous animals only lay the eggs when they are ready to hatch. Example, great white sharks. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of asexual reproduction. Its advantages are no need for a mate, it takes less time and energy, reliable or it takes fewer steps, produces large numbers of offspring very quickly, in stable environments with very little change, well-adopted organisms can spread and colonize quickly, and it tends to require less parental care. While its disadvantages are very little genetic variation in a population, harmful mutation in parent will be passed on to all offspring, entire population of genetically identical organism can go extinct if there is a change in the environment.
For the sexual reproduction, its advantages are each offspring is unique, more genetic variation within a population, population able to adopt to changes in the environment. Please recall the natural selection. Increased diversity it improves chance that some offspring will survive to reproduce. Its disadvantages, on the other hand, are time and energy to find a mate, fewer offspring, more time to develop offspring, and it tends to require more parental care. Animals are designed to survive their environment through their form and function. And what a better way to survive than to outsmart your predators and continue your species through reproduction. The male and female house bird will build a strong nest for its eggs to ensure that it will hatch and survive. The female lion will teach its young cub to hunt and protect it from predators when it is too young to defend itself. Let's identify and understand the factors that affect the success of reproduction. Factor number one, predation. In the animal kingdom exists a food chain. At the top of the food chain, there are animals we call apex predators, while at the bottom of the food chain are animals that are weak and easily hunted by predators. Apex predators are animals that hunt and feed on other animals to survive and eventually reproduce. These predators are never or rarely hunted by any other animal. On the other hand, since prey is easily hunted, their offspring is always compromised and in danger. The success for prey is to reproduce is greatly affected by the chances that this offspring get eaten when they are still young or developing. The connection of these animals in the food chain help maintain their progeny. Factor number two is the environment. To ensure a healthy offspring, the animal's environment must also be nurturing to the young. Temperature greatly affects the development and the origins of an animal to mate. When the continuing rise of temperatures around the globe, some animals are starting to dwindle in number and die before they even reproduce. When the water becomes too warm, the fishes will have a hard time getting oxygen and can eventually die when exposed to warm waters for longer periods of time. Glaciers and ice caps are melting in the Arctic, causing polar bears to suffer health conditions due to malnutrition. Factor number three is human interaction. Humans have been responsible for a lot of species extinction as we pose as one of the greatest threats to animals, polluting land, water, and air, Hunting and deforesting are ways in which animal reproduction get disturbed. On the other hand, there are some human interventions that try to reverse these effects and attempt to save endangered species. It is important to understand that the continuity of animals is vital to the balance of ecosystems. And because there is a food chain, when one animal species is threatened, the whole food chain is threatened as well. The stages of development of a human baby are complex and truly fascinating. Let's try to understand how a human embryo develops. Before an egg cell can be fertilized by sperm cell, both gametes need to be mature and become spermatozoa and oocyte. For it to be mature, it first has to undergo stages of development. Let's watch this.
that was an amazing lesson, isn't it? I hope you learned a lot in today's topic. Thank you for listening and don't forget to take care of yourself by staying at home. See you again next time. Bye-bye.